is the case out of all art restitution cases that really shaped the discussion uh, for, the, for, the, for the following years. Portrait of Wally is an oil painting by Austrian painter Egon Schill of his lover and model Wally. The painting currently resides at the Leopold Museum in Vienna, Austria. Schill painted the portrait of Wally early on in his relationship with her. His self-portrait acts as a matching pair to her portrait. Before World War II, the painting of Wally belonged to Leah Bondi, a Jewish art dealer who was fleeing the German annexation. Wally was not part of Bondi's art gallery, but instead a part of her own private collection. It hung on a wall in her apartment. The painting was confiscated by Frederick Welts, who was an Austrian art dealer as well as a Nazi. And you can see in the handwriting the sadness, the upset that was in those recollections. After the war, Leah Bondi began looking for the artworks that had been taken from her art gallery. Unfortunately, because records showed Frederick Welts had put renovations into the gallery, so therefore Leah Bondi owed him money. Wells was currently in American prison for his activities during the war. Mr. Welts acquired a number of Schill's paintings and drawings from Dr. Rieger, a art collector and Austrian Jew. When the U.S. forces occupied Austria, they arrested Mr. Welts and seized all his property, including the portrait of Wally. Dr. Rieger's son hired attorneys to recover the property that had been taken by the Nazis. His attorney wrote to the Reparations, Deliverance, and Restitution Division of the U.S. However, the letter did not contain any reference to the painting Portrait of Wally. Fourteen paintings the U.S. forces had seized were released by the RDR to the Austrian Federal Office for the Preservation of Historical Monuments. Portrait of Wally was one of these paintings. This was big. This was a big painting. This involved another government. This was at a major New York museum. On behalf of the Museum of Modern Art, it is my great pleasure to welcome you this evening to this wonderful celebration, the Leopold Collection Vienna. Due to go back uh, within a couple of days to Austria. The district attorney's action in barring the paintings from returning to the lender has the potential of seriously affecting the future of art loans in this country. I thought the argument was an absolute jaw dropper. I really did. The museum stated that Bondi had decided to drop the matter in 1954 and that there was no evidence to show that Leopold knew that the painting had been Nazi plundered when he acquired it. The heirs of the Bondi family continued their legal battle to recover the painting after her death. Legal proceedings, Judge Loretta A. Presca ruled that there was enough evidence regarding the ownership of the painting to allow a trial to proceed. A trial would determine if there was sufficient evidence to show that Leopold had knowledge that the painting was stolen when he bought it for his exhibit. Let, let's not forget that, that the entire New York Museum's community, including the Jewish Museum, got together in order to express its deep concerns about this and how art lending as known to mankind would come to an end. It's not a moral matter, it's a money matter. Because the moral issues in these areas get shady pretty fast especially when there's a chance to get money out of it. These are vestiges of a people's history, of a family's history. And it is terribly important, I think, that that be honored. There should be a rush to judgment on these cases.